finish you off. And, and this Satma 67, the counter reaction, the Rambam, the Yankat Shimoni, and now the history of Hungary to be continued next week. There's Rakhon of Hengli Yankoe. Ending off the class, as I've ended off my classes since 1981, we should meet again in health and happiness. Das Vidanya. Yosef moved next to me so that they should pick you up. Yomo, uh, where's Yomo? I need Yomo. He has disappeared. Let's, let's, uh, this has to be adjusted. Oh, perfect. I became uh, a technician. Um, Yosef and I go back many years, to be exact, 41 years, and there's a triple chord that unites us. Number one, I came back from my first trip to Russia, January 1981. A few weeks later, Yosef came back from 11 years in a hotel which he was forced into in communist Russia. The first time he spoke in public, Heichel Shlomo, the Mizrahi women from Canada, this gentleman spoke in Hebrew, and I translated it into English. Okay, that's the first connection. Next, he married a student of mine, Kahatya Sarusi from Mahon Gold, and Baruch Hashem, Lekavet Ula Teferet, children, grandchildren. And you, you'll overtake me with the great grandchildren, but you have a long way to go. So try, then you'll overtake my brother. With my brother, you have a long, long way to go. Kanayin Hara, Dr. Levi Rothkopf. Uh, then the third connection, well, you're sitting in this room. Do you know where Rabbi Yosef got married? One second walk from here. The terrace that is locked off. And I can show you exactly where Menachem Begin stood and where Yitzhak Navon, the president, stood. And uh, the chief rabbi. The chief, well, the chief rabbi certainly will be here. But we got a Begin and Navon with all the security. Yosef, uh, I had a terrible experience today. I told the guard downstairs that a famous Russian Jew is coming. He's a Russian Jew. He didn't even know your name. And I told him, do you know about the attempt to hijack the plane in 1970? And he looked at me like I stepped off the moon. Tell us, why? The, tell us about the documentary, what you put out, how everyone can access it, because Ultimately, thousands of people will hear this year. And why did you put it out? Exactly for the reason that people don't know. Some of them still don't remember. And the majority is all altogether ignorant for some reasons. As to the Russian jury, Russian jury doesn't know its history, for it didn't, it didn't exist under Soviet regime. You know, it was uh, one of the ways of uh, assimilating us, not to tell us about our history. It's why they don't know. And what's ridiculous and ironically is that the Jewish agents and you know, all other organizations don't teach them as well. <laughs> so for 50 years, you mentioned 1970, that uh, we were arrested, more than 50 years, I expected that somebody will tell the story. And lately, more than that, using uh, the ignorance of people, some people t start telling all kinds of different stories, telling that they did it, whatever. So it was my challenge uh, to do it myself. Myself, Mamish, is my hands. You know, normally, I am not a, a filmmaker and not a producer and uh, not a wealthy man, wealthy man. But uh, you know, with uh, God help, me and uh, another friend, a former Fusnik for many years, Alexander Rasgon, 
made the film and people um, estimate it as a professional and documentary for we invited uh, people from Ishkaz Kesher, from Nati, and they thought that's true. But I, I just want to tell them what Ishkaz Kesher is. When, uh, as all of you know, my wife and I worked for the Mossad for 10 years. We lived a double existence. It's not for now, but there are two books written about it. One is in Hebrew, when it Tiv had the mama, you'll meet Malta and Aaron Rakefet. And a guy named Rakefet in his seventh book entitled From Washington Avenue to Washington Street, there are a number of chapters on Russia. And in Rakefet's Rakefet Aaron, Chelik Dalid, there's more material. The security clause was lifted. Now, when I say we work for the Mossad, that is correct. It was a branch of the Mossad that dealt with Russian Jewry since 1952. No one knows how long it's been in existence. That was called by many names. The technical name is Lishka Takesha, to keep the, the Kesha, the knot between us, the continuance, the relationship. It's also known as Nativ. Nativ means a path, and that's why the book is called Nativ Hadmama, the silent path, that you can't publicize it. Okay, then that's what Yosef is referring to. Anyway, uh, it was very important that the professionals estimate that it's a true story. And it is nowadays in uh, their library in the video library. So, but normally people don't look, you know, if you don't remember, you are not looking for that. So I appreciate your initiative to give me another chance. Okay, so I want to ask you, can they get it on YouTube? Yeah, sure, I prepared it here. Maybe you will put on uh, your video later on, but it's... Uh, okay, the, 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 this is the link that they need yeah, to get it on yeah, YouTube. Sure. Okay, let's... So, Okay, so we're going to publicize it both here, and we're going to put it on YU Torah, so that when they hear you uh, speaking, mm -hmm. th they they will know uh, they yeah. they will know exactly where to go. Okay, so now uh, you, you'll put it on. Uh, uh, Professor Tarragon will, will take care of it. We are in good we we are in good hands. You'll say. I've been teaching Torah 63 years. How many people I've influenced, I don't know. I never wanted to leave teaching Torah. And I write about it now. I'm writing on the Shmuel Belkin, the second president at Yeshiva University, who no one here knows, knows about. But do you realize how much influence you had on the Jewish world. And I want to tell you a story. This volume just appeared. Hidden Heroes by Pamela Brown Cohen. Pam Cohen, Union Councils for Soviet Jews. Exactly. She writes about and it. And she published my book right? in English. In Eng right, right. Let me, tell, let me tell you, let me tell the class what I got out of the book. Here is a lady at home in a suburban Chicago, wealthy suburb. It's cookie. Father, husband is making a good living. They belong to a reformed temple. Their home is not kosher. They are totally assimilating. If things had gone normal, there wouldn't be a descendant of theirs left Jewish today, except maybe a miracle if Chabad or MCSY picked up someone. She's listening to the radio. She writes it, 1970, and they interrupt with news that an attempt was made to hijack a plane in Leningrad, and so many people have been arrested, mainly Jews. You know where that lady is today? She's in Yerushalayim 
I believe she's wearing a shaykel. I saw a picture of yes, her. Sure. A shaykel, a shawl. A good lady. A baruch Hashem. I'm, I'm, my wife who uh, covers my hair and my daughters and my granddaughters. Haredi But haredi tzi, absolutely. Haredim ledvach Hashem. If you're not a tzioni, you're not a proper haredi ledvach Hashem. 100%. Yosef, did you ever realize the influence you would have? Tell us. Tell us here you suffered 11 years in prison, in labor camp, your stories about Pesach that you made, the Hanukkah, the Yom Kippur that you observed the wrong day, remember? Yeah. Because Shabbos, the impact, if anyone with a Jewish heart has to be moved, you can't go on being a human being without Judaism when they hear your stories. And, and here, He's sitting right before you. Anyway, to put things straight, it's not me. Certainly it's Ribbon Shalom. Right. And then what we are bringing in this documentary, it was a step, a certain stage of development of underground Jewish Zionist movement in Soviet Union. We were the last one, but uh, there were many, many prisoners of Zion that were arrested in the 30s, in the 40s, tortured, killed, whatever. And finally, we had State of Israel, Medinat Israel, and we are like a consequence in schut of Medinat Israel, we could do that. Not, not us. You know, understand? The importance is that we have our Medina. You know, I, I talk to my friends, Haredim Russian Jews, I say, okay, I am with you in the criticism, whatever is going here. But we have to remember, if not the state of Israel, you will still stay in Soviet Union, assimilated and forgotten. It's very important to underline. You know. I'm very critical myself on whatever is going in in the state of Israel. But we have to dis understand that it is a value by itself. You know, you can criticize. You prefer we would like to improve it, but. And then there was a hero, a leader, Mark Dimshit, that led the group that was forgetting altogether. Now, I want to raise an issue that is as real today as it was 50 years ago, and even before. And I have to tell you, uh, in reading the book, this lady is shocked when she first gets involved in trying to help Soviet Jews. She is absolutely shocked that they're criticizing the government of Israel. We have a problem here. Did you know that the government of Israel was against what you were doing trying to hijack a plane? Yeah, sure. You're aware of it? Yeah. Do you, do you, do you realize what's happening today with the Ukraine? What they want, arms we should supply, and but Russia, Syria, yeah. Russian Jews. Yeah. And only yesterday, Russia and Ukraine voted in UN uh, demanding that Israel will be, how to say, out from nuclear weapon. They <laughs> united Russia, Russia and Ukraine, Ukraine together right. against Israel, right. which is their real face. Right. Right. Uh, and you, you realize why the Israel was opposed, do you understand the, the difficulty we have here? Yeah. <coughs> it's, and, and I, I can tell you uh, something that's not well known. Uh, in my classroom, I've spoken about it. Archives have been opened, and a student of mine went through the archives of the Herzog family, and they found a letter from the Rub to President Chaim Herzog. Are you aware of this? Uh, no, never. It, heard it, it was published in uh, Makari no. Shon. And then they contacted me. And, uh, uh, they found a letter from the Rub. What year approximately? Uh, in the 50s? In, 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 no, this is from the 80s, the early 80s. In the election, when, they, when Kahana, I think it was 81, was elected to the Knesset, yeah. Herzog, as president, had a view every head of every party to decide who he's going to empower to form the government. He met with the 
Arab parties that would love to destroy Israel until today they say it openly, and he wouldn't meet with Kahana. So this letter comes to Herzog with the rough signature. We did a lot of research. Everyone is convinced that it's a forgery. I even have a theory who did it. It had to be someone who had access to the rub's mail, because the rub at that point was lower lane who crippled, and it was his shamashim who controlled him. Uh, but but I, I was told that even then he did remember what uh, Tsugia no, no, he read <laughs> no, he no, no, the day before. No, no, he no, forgot no, everything, no, but it he no, remember, no, did remember. No, no, it, it, this is into, this before he was totally out of it, mm. 1985. It's last year mm. was December 1985, Hanukkah. Then he couldn't leave Boston. Lower lane of us. That's from a mensch. I don't know. If, we, we have to be humble. But the letter was a forgery. At least I believe so, and the Soloveitchik family believes. There are reasons why I can prove it, but it's not for now. Herzog answered the letter. And you know what he wrote back? that I can't accept Kahana because the Russians are watching and the Arabs are watching. And I'm worried about what will happen to the Jews in Russia and in the Arab lands. So you see the difficulty Israel has. You do, you know what my answer is? I say what Kahana did, the demonstrations, you know, it was fabulous. He woke us up. He ran after, sure. you can't believe it. Uh, it. The Russian consul in New York, on Parker, he mm -hmm. ran after Russian cars. They were throwing cucumbers and tomatoes at the... Now, Israel had to deny it has anything to do with it. Could you imagine how that would affect the Jews in Russia? On the other hand, God, I had to do what he did. I, I can't oppose him on that level. I think he woke us up to the issue of Russian jury. With your permission, I'll tell you a story. When I was released in 1981, I was invited to see America, to meet American jury, and I met uh, Moshe Feinstein, that's all. And I asked him to, uh, to ask the Shiva Bochrin to take part in demonstrations. So uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein told me, you know, I am a former Soviet Jew. Jew, Jew. I know that you cannot uh, uh, oppose the Soviet government, for it will make only a worser to the Soviet Jew. I told Rabbi, the time has been changed. We are in that bad situation. You can't spoil anything just to save us. It's very important. And he told, there was other people around him, he told, Mendelevich, in this issue, is more knowledgeable than me. You are my poisek. If you say it should be done, I order all Yeshiva Bochrem to go on the demonstration. Oh, beautiful. So I can tell you, I, 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 I have a major piece that's ready for publication on rabbinic authority. And I can tell you the greatest embarrassment in my life was exactly this period when the word went out that the religious Jews Halpern from the glasses the the the, the wrestler the rabbi the Talmud Chacham Rafal Halpern mm -hmm. he contacted Lishkat HaKesha mm -hmm. I want to make a demonstration in B'nai Brak Aryeh Crow. Zeichet Tzadik Levracha. He headed up this division of the Mossad that he was my handler in English. Hamafil Shalei. I revered the man's memory. Second to the Rav, I never met anyone that I admire so as Aryeh Crow. Second to Rav, second to Mori Rebbe, Rav Yosef Dov, Halevi Salavechi. So Aryeh Crow says to me, Harav Rakeset, Ani, Remember, give him the rules. Our rules were you don't criticize the Soviet Union. Israel is not out to criticize. We want reparation. Jewish families can go back to their homeland, go back to their family. That's what we want. 
Well, I met with him, he took me, he had, he had two restaurants there. I think they were the only kosher restaurants in Dieselgaard, one Fleischig's, one Milchig's. Took me out to lunch, we, oh, I was impressed. This is Rabbi Altrin, and, he, and when he wants to do something, he taught, he has money and influence and power and connections, and they sent Rabbi Kites from America they, to tell, I was so embarrassed, we don't demonstrate in the Lubavitcher Rebbe, you know. Times have changed. You have to ask the experts. I write about this and I show so stories. So mention the story as well. Ah, unbelievable. It's a first-hand story. First-hand story, all right, Misha. Now, I want to touch upon something else that you alluded to. And uh, almost everyone in this room is an ole. And, uh, you know, Eden Nudel, the famous Eden Nudel, I trust everyone else I'm talking about, that little lady who suffered so. Joan Fonda went to visit her. I mean, you have to give credit, uh, even a, even a non-Jew, the feeling, the Mesirat Nefesh. She was very unhappy in Israel, very disappointed. And, uh, you know, there's the dream and there's the reality. And I think what you said is very, very important. No one can be more critical than Israel than we who live here. But we have to thank God we have a state, we have elections, we have religious parties, we have to deal with the non-religious, and I, I, and I always feel... We have the army. Uh, Baruch Hashem, if not for the army, we couldn't be sitting here now. The people here from Mala Dumim, there was just a, 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 a Piguan Mala Dumim, Kiyataba. I managed to serve in IDF after being released. Uh, Kala Kavod, I know, someone wrote to me, he met you in IDF. I did basic training at the age of 38. Chayal mitztayim. At the then 15 years, I lectured in the army. But what you say is very correct. We have to be happy, but part of it is our fault. Why didn't we come in Aliyah? 1880s, 1890s. 1948. Right. Why, why are we criticizing? Had we come, it would have been a different state. It, it is, we criticize for love. Uh -huh. You know, if you are ignorant, if you are neutral, you don't you say, you say it's beautiful, that's so. But it is ours. Right. And as far as it is ours, it uh, makes us pay. Bring us pay. Oh, that's so it. Really, it reflects the real passion and love if it makes you pay. Right, right, exactly. We care. It's like a child. It's like... You are a child. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And... Let me ask you another question. Did you ever interact with Eden Nudel? It always hurt me that she was upset with the reality here. Uh, see, when I was arrested, no movement had been existed that time, so we never met. But later, when she was released, we met and cooperated. And I tried to explain her what, you know, but they couldn't do anything. There were a lot of conflicts and, you know. Could part of it be the fact that she was not religious? She didn't have that religious feeling. Pesach HaKol, with all our problems, Shabbat is Shabbat, Tashru is Tashru. We have here beautiful, beautiful people, Yehuda the Shomron, what right. you see there. I, I have many grandchildren living in the Shomron all over. And I see, I, I mean, they're, they're minyanim, they don't know what life is like. They go to minyan in their building, min chamarev, outside in the street, reish chaydeh, shabbos. You know, I will tell something about myself, and it will maybe answer your question about Ida Nuta. People ask me, how was my absorption in Israel? I told, no absorption. To begin with, that I spoke Hebrew, but more important, you know, people come, look for a community to whom to adjust, you know. I never looked for my community. I had my community. Yeah. Torah, Mitzvahs, Eretz Israel, yeah. I found it immediately, and I immediately became a part of it. People that are looking still with whom to uh, uh, be together, it brings certainly this kind of conflicts, you know. Yeah. Well said, well said. And I, I always felt bad that she came here after such a struggle 
but never found herself. Uh, it, it, it hurt. On the other hand, you take a look at uh, Yuli Edelstein, mm -hmm. who I smuggled in. You have no idea. I was a pauper, and suddenly uh, uh, I.A. Crow gives me this, had to be 85 already. I.A. Crow, our second trip. Uh, but there are three times, but I also I sent over 300 Mark and I sent over at least over 200 people, could be even more. You know, it's a whole process to find people who have a dual citizenship, know how to keep secrets, happily married, can teach Gemara, and to send and to prepare and to brief. So I came in with thousands of dollars, which with Tanya's Zonal of Racha, we bought in the Berryuska, uh, the foreign currency shop, expensive whiskey, and I had food that they gave me in London. The Mossad over there gave me cheese and salamis, all glad kosher. And she used it to bribe the liquor, to bribe the guards, to send in the kosher food for him. And here you have an example. Look what he, if someone would have told me, Yuli Edelstein will one day be one of the most important people in Israel. I'm totally Sharansky, Natan Sharon, Hayom. Take a look how they conquered. There was a Yuli Stern. I don't know if you remember him. My closest friend. Uh, your close, so let me tell you about your closest friend. 1981, you know, the cover. I'm, I'm from Queens. I'm speaking. And I pulled it off, yeah, Baruch Hashem, Queens, this, that. Only to a few people I was to say, Dirishat Shalom me Shmuel Chatzar. Who is Shmuel Chatzar? He was at the International Book Festival. He headed up the Israeli desk. So all the refusnikim knew him. So the minute I said, Dirishat Shalom me Shmuel Chatzar, they knew where I was coming from, that the rest is a bluff. He never heard that. Later, there's a demonstration for you, and my wife is making posters, etc. and he comes into our house to pick up the posters. My wife is an artist, and he faints. He says, what are you doing here? You live in Queens. Mata second. I live in Queens like the Chinaman lives in Queens, <laughs> I said. And, and, and th this was Yuli Stern, these people so integrated, it was beautiful to see. I will uh, point uh, maybe something else. If you were important leader in Soviet Russia only, and you come to be again something prominent, it is a mistake. As we say, you made it in Soviet Russia. Okay, now you are regular. It was helped me to get, to get adjusted to Israel. I never felt that somebody is, uh, uh, that I deserve something, you know. Okay. I'm a regular. I did there whatever I could, could do, for it was my, uh, my challenge. Here in Israel, I'm a regular. It is very, very... Very healthy approach. You're absolutely right. And I'm going to tell you a little story that happened in this very building. A lot of American rabbis come in Aliyah. One of these famous American rabbis, his uh, children studied here, his, his children taught here, his grandson studied here, and he would daven here as a Shani Yom Kippur. And uh, one Yom Kippur, he grabs me like this, he says, Rabarin, when I davened in America in my shul in Brooklyn, 1,000 pairs of eyes were upon me. When I daven here, no one looks at me. So I said to Rabbi Horowitz, let him speak, Neila, be Mechabachim to speak, he needs. But you should know, a year later he was back in Florida, a rabbi in a senior citizen's complex. And that's where he died, but all his descendants almost all live here. So I you And Naim Hashem go Mirishana Adaharichana. It's the more, most important eyes that are following you more than important than the thousands there in the in Gold. Exactly, exactly, exactly. 
Uh, so I want to say to my dear students, both sitting in front of me and both listening across the world, this was a moment in time. And I want to end off, uh, I want to tell Rabbi Yosef something else. You don't know how you're getting out of Russia gave myself and my wife the greatest mitzvah that we have, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you. I write about it. Who got you out? Ultimately, it was... And your girlfriend. The Bronfman family, the World Jewish Congress. I was all the... You know what's a Jewish Congress, World Jewish Congress, is a small office and one secretary. An executive director, it's just, you know, it's, and, and, and it's that, more than the, And Israel Singer, Singer, Singer right. Rabbi Ta'ar. So, when you came out, and Bronfman, and you don't know what went on here, they announced on the radio, you're missing from labor camp. And everyone was upset, where are you? And a few hours later, we heard that Bronfman, his private plane, and it was- no, it was a regular. A regular plane. Who, when did he use a private plane with? Essas? Eden Ida Nudel. Eden Nudel. I remember he once used his own private plane. Uh, and then you come here. When we were overwhelmed in Russia by the Essas family, Eliyahu, Anya, the children. So Mark and I organized a big committee consisting of two people. I, I print in Washington, you have a picture. We print. Committee for the Release of the Essas Family. I went to America. I met with senators, with congressmen, and I met with Rav Moshe Shera. But everyone told me, you have to get to Bronfman. I said, yeah, he got out. That's a friend of lunch. I got to Bronfman. You know how I got to Bronfman? Yisrael Singer's niece was my student in the Chala. Yeah. She got me into her uncle, and we hit it off, and he got to Bronfman, and the Mossad, Arye Crow, I get a phone call, Erev Shabbos Kaitish Pasha Toldot, 1985. Harav Rakefet! I'm on my way to the Kotel. It's an hour before Shabbat. Hitzlachta. Anachnu matzdiyim lecha. Mossad saluting me. Brumpin is getting us out. Sunday, I finished teaching. I used to teach Sunday afternoon. Now I can't teach next night. I teach only two mornings a week. I, I, I'm older. I don't have that energy in the end. It's under 20. Amen, amen. He, the Mossad, I was a pauper. Mossad pays for all the calls. Call Russia, call Essas. I call Essas. And after the Dabrim, Kacha, the Shamata Mashu al Yetziat Nusrayim, Kacha Lashon Kachat Sodit. I mean, when I sell as a room, I've been miyat, who to face it's a miyat. Lo, lo Shamati. Me, I'd say, Ha Nashim, Ha Nashim, Ha Taf, Ha Kol. When the phone call is over, and remember, four people are on the phone. I'm on the phone, Essas is on the phone, the KGB is on the phone, and the Mossad is on the phone. You can hear them breathing. The operator asks us, I'll never forget this, the Israeli operator, Yesh Chabashat, Fani Omer, Lo, the Yomeritli, a few weeks later, they announced Rumpfman with the deal for the, uh, the vodka. He will not sign a hundred million dollar plus deal at that time unless the SS family is included. And I want them for the World Jewish Congress Assembly. You know, when I asked, when I told, I thanked Bronfman for whatever he did, he told me, I am only the straw that break the camel bone. But the most important was your struggle. Right. World struggle for Soviet Jewry. He ah. was a decent man. Listen, if these students can tell the world about what you did for Abba Kosa, and Mora and Matzah, 
and Hanukkah candles, it will create so many more Jews. So, all right, we're shlichim of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is, God put us in a certain, Achshev Shenotzati, I once heard a lot of Torah from the Rav, if God would have created us before our time, we wouldn't have succeeded, but we created a certain period where we can be successful. But as successful as we are, we have to be molded la Kaddish Baruch Hu to remain humble, al hanisim al haniflat. This was a moment of time. I started, thank everyone for participating. I can only tell you next Sunday, Monday, I pick up just where I left off. On Sunday, we pick up with, do you have to eat meat at a Brit Mila? And we go into the whole Hasidic world. You'll see why Rabbi Menashe Klein is different than Rabbi Meisha Feinstein. And Monday, we pick up exactly where we ended a few minutes ago. Satma in America, the connection to Hungary, Austrit in Germany, Synagogue Council, and all that bedevils us until today. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank Rabbi Yosef. Again, please, people, friends, watch the movie. Right, right. And right. give right. over to other people. It is very important, very educative, very true to life. Right. And I was going to end off with that. Uh, but I want to thank Rabbi Yosef. I never enjoyed a book more than this little... Except of my unbroken spirit. Well, the unbroken spirit. And you, what about your book on, on, on what went on in, in, in Russia with the draft? With, with, what do they call them? The, the, what's your book called? The Mar not the Moranos. The, the, the drafted in the army. Ah, Cantonist. The Cantonist. Yeah, that was your Cantonist. master's thesis. And now I wrote another book, <clears throat> whatever I did here in Israel after my release. Ah. It's called uh, Prisoner of Zion in Zion. Prisoner of Zion, beautiful, beautiful. It's almost, that's even better than Pri my... Prison for Zion. In I Zion. see here's David Stoll uh, watching us. Right, right. One of the leaders of the student struggle for right. civil jury. He always uh, say, never say prison of Zion, prison for Zion. For Zion, very, very good. Zion al And you're looking there, the third person, he's listening from Hollywood, Florida, and there's a person listening from Chicago, and there's a person listening from Brooklyn, etc., etc. So uh, I, 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 I just want to repeat what Rabbi Yosef just said. Pass on the word, and I want to have a schut the Shemayim that I arranged this today, that one day the Rebani Shalom will say to me, over 100,000 people saw the documentary as a result of this moment of dialogue. Until we meet again in health and happiness, let me hear it, Das Vidanya. Cool too.